What's going on guys? Welcome to Everything Always. My name's Michael Roman, AKA All Fires. Now, obviously huge spoiler warning for Venom The Last Dance. We're gonna break down the mid credit and the post credit scene and what they sort of foreshadow, not only for Sony's universe, but a possible crossover with the 616 and the return of two characters from this film, which will contain spoiler warnings for the end if you haven't seen it yet. So if you wanna go into the unknown not knowing or if this is in some way gonna ruin your Venom experience, now would be the time to back out. Otherwise, we're gonna dive right in and break down again the mid credit and the post credit scene explain what was going on at the end of venom the last dance but first if you could grab the subscribe button we do daily marvel content at the channel and that's all we do so if that sort of things for you hit the sub button leave a comment down below that will automatically enter you to win our ongoing ps5 giveaway the next one is right around the corner literally next week for agatha all along's finale again all you got to do be a sub leave a comment if you want stick around to the end of the video we get into all the giveaway stuff again there okay so we pick up with the first mid credit scene and we see the return of Noel and his face reveal obviously setting him up for the future we're going to talk about that in just a second now the mid credit scene is extremely short and the dialogue goes like this your champion has fallen your planets will be mine the king in black is awake I will kill your world everyone will burn and you will watch and that's when they flip up his face and you can see very closely that it is actually mocap of Andy Serkis and to me oddly enough it looks a lot like Snoke another character that Andy Serkis did the mocap for and I think maybe the gripes were legitimate about the CGI not being the best but my only gripe was I looked at Noel and all of a sudden saw Snoke now some people were speculating with that line and you will watch that he might have been talking to someone on Clintar who's off screen but I think more likely the case that that this is all just rhetorical he's talking out loud setting him up with foreshadowing to return in the future of the MCU question mark now a lot of rumors leading up to this film said that he might actually be the villain and that spider-man 4 might end up being king in black so to hear him say the king in black is awake perhaps piqued some fans interest but I think it a lot more likely the case and now that industry insiders are walking that report back that we're gonna have something a lot more MCU centric and maybe even dr. doom tied for spider-man 4 rather than trying to bring Noel in from the Sony universe and that Sony is basically just setting up Null as one of their future crossover villains. Now, whether or not they ever get there with stinkers like Morbius and Madam Web, yet to be seen, but obviously he is a future threat. Sony is not leaving him as a one-off and in this film, he's coming back somewhere down the road. We just don't know what those plans look like exactly yet. Speaking of coming back, then we get to the post credit scene, which might seem a little bit odd, but actually foreshadows the return of Venom after we thought that he was completely gone at the end of the film. We're back on the beach where the bartender emerges from the cave that he's been hiding in, and the beach is absolutely decimated because of the final battle in Act 3. He's reacting to it and screaming, and then you see a broken bottle that is sitting on top of a rock, and then you see a black cockroach climbing up the rock. The black cockroach is to imply that Venom is not all the way gone, that he sacrificed himself, but there may be a small piece of him that remains. And obviously from that one small piece of symbiote that's bonded to this cockroach, it could imply that Venom may be all the way back, seek out Eddie again, or at least be returning in what we think will be an inevitable team up eventually with Spider-Man, which could end up bringing in Null, but again, I do not think that's for Spider-Man 4. Now listen, I'm going to be as frank as possible. I actually enjoyed Venom 3. All in all, I think it's a film that knows what it wants to be and manages to do that. But I am extremely tired of Sony's Spider-Man-less Spider-Verse. And I think the only way that they're going to find a way to fix this is by including Spider-Man. So with all of these comments by Tom Hardy that he's done, he's done with Venom. This is the quote-unquote last dance. This is the end of the franchise. I don't think that it's he's lying. I think that he just knows, like Sony, they've reached the end of doing these Venom movies without a Spider-Man and that eventually the necessity for this character is to tie him back over with the Spider-Man, have them become enemies at first and then maybe friends to take on Null. I think setting up Null as an overarching villain for a major Sony crossover is ambitious and something that Sony needed to do to keep the carrot out in front of why they're even making these movies in the first place. 
but my reaction to that is the same as when we started hearing a year or two ago that Sony was going to work towards a spider getting crossover. You've got to actually get traction, characters we care about, and then relationships between them before you can work to a crossover. And really, the only time Sony has managed to do that in real recently was with Spider-Man No Way Home in the MCU, uniting Spider-Man with other versions of himself. And that connectiveness did everything it needed to do for the film. So if they can find a way to make sense of Tom Hardy getting to the 616, of Spider-Man getting over to wherever he is, if it's the broken multiverse that's part of the MCU that's going to help Sony do this, all these things are amazing, but they have got to get some real traction first. And Morbius and Madam Web are the opposite of traction. And now we have yet another film disconnected from Spider-Man's, even though it's a Spider-Man villain in Kraven. And though I do like the fact that they've embraced the rated R, which should have been the way they did Let There Be Carnage. But here's the truth. A crossover is only as good as what you're crossing over. And right now, they may have a couple of pieces in Venom and Spider-Man that seem to make sense and want to work towards a null crossover, but unless they catch some real traction that Sony with their own projects, just having Spider-Man isolated in the MCU and then doing these solo villain rogue gallery movies without a Spider-Man is simply not it. And so... Again, when Tom Hardy is talking about on the press junket, this being it, him not coming back, this is the finishing for the trilogy, I believe that what he's basically saying is they're not making any more solo Venom movies, regardless of seeing Venom in the post credit scene and knowing that the symbiote's there until they find a way to cross him over with Spider-Man. And when they do that, it doesn't necessarily have to be a Venom title, but that's the way that Tom Hardy's back. And he even said as much when asked point blank recently in one of those interviews, uh, what, would be, what would be enough to bring him back and it's Tom Holland Spider-Man specifically. But you guys let me know all your thoughts down below, what you thought of the post credit scenes, what you thought of Venom The Last Dance. I'm all ears as always. Quickly, let's get into the giveaway stuff before I let you go. All right, we're still giving away PlayStation 5s here at the channel, and the next one happens to be at the end of the month to coincide with Agatha All Along's finale. If you want to be entered to win or for any of the other future giveaways here at the channel, all the same rules will always apply. You've got to be a subscriber, so hit the sub button, then leave a comment down below, and because it's truly random, the more videos you comment on, the better chance you have of winning. All winners will be announced at the end of videos in the same way we're doing here, live with my voice in the winning comment when there is one shown on screen. So please be safe and vigilant on YouTube or really any other platform. Please remember anybody can take a content creator's profile picture, claim to be them. It's all a ruse to get your information on a third party app like Telegram or WhatsApp and charge you for shipping for a prize that's not there. No content creator, myself included, will ever charge you for shipping. So please be safe again and vigilant on any platform. And if you should get a spam comment like that, just report it directly to YouTube. They are very fast about deleting that account. And then everywhere they've commented goes away as well. You're actually doing a huge service to the YouTube community, not just the one page or comment that they happen to try to snag you on. My name is Michael Roman. You can find me in a couple of places, Instagram and Twitter at I'm Fires. You can also find me on Spotify, YouTube, Amazon, Apple, iTunes under the name All Fires. And while I'd sincerely appreciate you checking my music out, thanks for checking this channel out. Stick around, guys. We'll be posting again real, real soon.